Hey, alright, what is going on guys? Rudlinel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials, and boom, we're working with Hashlib, we're boom, almost done, and boom, that's awesome. Okay, that's enough of me going crazy, I've got the Kazam screen recorder running right now, you guys should use that software if you're on Linux and like to do screencasting like I do. Other than that, let's get idle open, let's run some crazy, crazy stuff, and let's get Python ready to roll with Hashlib. Okay, <laughs> I think I have enough enthusiasm for this video, guys. I I'm done. I, I can now resign. I, I am retired from my position as a Python language teacher. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and import Hashlib, and let's stop having fun. Let's get to business. We're going to want a new module. Not, not so much module, but anyway, module function anyway, to actually begin working with our SHA-512 algorithm. So, you guys know that, obviously, all of these objects have the same sort of structure. They all have the same functions, they all have the same variables, it's just a different algorithm. So we can pass in a string here, this will be hashed, and uh, we've got that object. Now, let's actually set that to something we can work with. So, s can equal what has been returned here, now we can use s to go ahead and hex digest that string, this will be hashed. And when we run this, blah, 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 we get this long mass of characters and, you know, the typical jamble and jarble that comes with using cryptography and encrypting and decrypting and hashing stuff. So, boom, there it is. But this is SHA-512. That's a whole lot of numbers. And you know what that means, right? The, the more numbers you have, the bigger the thing is. <laughs> and uh, that's it in kind of layman's terms. Without the whole big explanation of how many bits and bytes this algorithm is using, we have this really, really long string that is more secure. Because, in essence, there's just more stuff to it. So, SHA-512, if, if you were a hacker or whatever, if you were some godforsaken illegal villain that you should never be watching my videos, <laughs> not for, you know, the greater good and stuff, if you guys were to try and crack this, if you guys were to just, like, enumerate numbers and letters one after the other, just like a brute force attack, trying stuff out, trying to see if it'll work, it'll take you quite a while, because this is a longer hex. This is a longer hash. There's more to it. So, in essence, SHA-512 is kind of stronger and kind of better than SHA-1. It all kind of depends on the scenario, what you really determine as better or best in your own certain circumstances. This goes along with, S uh, I'm sorry, MD5 as well. Any of these cryptography techniques or algorithms or processes, they're all variables to you. And I don't mean variables in the sense that something that you would be using inside your program, I mean variables in that their value to you varies. You don't know whether or not this is going to be a a better algorithm or process to use for securing your data. It all depends on what sort of system you're working on, how portable things need to be, how fast they need to be, yada yada yada. But SHA-512 is an option. And that's all that I want to show you guys. Especially in Python, especially using Hashlib, this is something that you can do, and you have the accessibility and access, obviously, to do that inside Python. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you for letting me get this one off my chest. This has been really, really life-changing and cathartic, especially. This has been therapeutic, and I really hope that you will be able to touch me the same way in the next video.